Let's get it. This is Life's Essential Ingredients with Jeff and a mic, where we hope to inform, inspire, and transform lives one essential ingredient at a time. Welcome to the show. Ashito, we back. And every time I hear that intro, I just got to give some love to Wayne Wayne. Uh, thank you for creating that for us. And listeners, thank you for tuning in to another episode. We're going to change it up a little bit. Uh, most of you probably don't even know that Life's Essential Ingredients is part of a nonprofit. And it's part of C4 Leaders. And C4 Leaders is the only nonprofit to utilize the pizza making process to create space for our companions to be seen heard and loved. We also write children's books, host this podcast and use the most amazing handmade hand tossed sourdough pizza. Like you heard that right, sourdough pizza, wood fired to bring out the best in each other. So please check out pizzadays.org to support our important work. Now let's get into our incredible guest who definitely will inform, inspire, and transform the listeners. And again, thank you. We have listeners now in 39 countries, over 562 cities, and we are season three, episode 11 with Kevin Keppel coming from Dallas, Texas. And first off, where you can find him, just go to his website, kevinkeppel.us, and it's K-E-P-P-L-E. So about our guest in 2019, Kevin took a leap of faith to speak to his truth and started his company, Keppel Coaching. Kevin has never looked back and is a Gallup certified strengths coach who has helped thousands of professionals look inside themselves to find clarity, discover what they love, and live a life of freedom. Part of Keppel Coaching is the Unlock Your Freedom podcast, which is ranked in the top 3% of all podcasts globally. Through weekly episodes, Kevin provides step-by-step -step training, coaching, and accountability to leaders who want to take their life and their business to the next level. Kevin, thanks for sharing your gifts with the world and for helping thousands of people do the same. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, fellas. Excited to uh, share with you guys. Uh, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. And uh, here we go. So, Kevin, we always start each episode with a thought of the day. And you heard we're season three, episode 11, over 100 shows that we've recorded. And we're 100% on these quotes with having them resonate with the guest. And so you can tell me, Jeff, you're smoking some stuff. You're way off uh, in this. Uh, <laughs> or you can say, hey, yeah, that one hits home with me. And it's from Confucius. To put the world in order, we must first put the nation in order. To put the nation in order, we must first put the family in order. To put the family in order, we must first cultivate our personal life. We must first set our hearts right. Why would I pick that for you? Man, that's powerful. Uh, well, I've, you had me at Confucius, you know, I think, uh, I mean, I've never heard that, but that's, that's pretty brilliant. And I mean, I think that's right on the mark. Like, like your hundred percent is still, uh, looking mm, good because yes. and any successful change starts with us, right? Like we can't, you know, give what we don't have. Right. And, you know, like Gandhi said it best, be the change you want to see. And it starts from that place of love, which is in our heart, right? Like our mind is great, can conceive of a magnificent future, but our heart's what makes it real. And, you know, the mind is based in fear, which is dangerous. I want to come from a place of love and creation as opposed to that reactivity and fear for the mind. So absolutely resonated with me. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go, Pasho. Uh Keep that 100% rolling. And so we usually get in the show, just allow the listeners to kind of get to know you a little bit. So this is a very broad question. So take it any which way you want. But what was life like growing up for you? Yeah, wow. So I had a little bit of a dichotomy growing up. I, my parents got divorced when I was, I think I was like one. So before I was really aware of what was happening. And um, my mom got remarried uh, fairly quick and my dad and her were copacetic and happy and one of their main goals was to support my brother and I which is awesome you know like everybody should be so lucky but uh it was really two totally different kind of environments because I mean one side was liberal one side was conservative my stepdad is a Methodist preacher and so not a lot of income in that profession right but uh so there wasn't a lot of resources 
when I was at home with my mom and then my dad was a CPA on his own firm and did pretty well, uh, especially, you know, financially. And so just really seeing how different environments could drastically be different in the same exact life. It was, it was really profound. I didn't know it at the time, but I got to really experience what uh, coming from a place of lack could do to you. And also coming from a really abundant place. And I think both of those Help me and hurt me. And, you know, life was pretty normal. I feel like I was about 15, like played sports, did good in school. And then around 15, I, and I got a little off track. I um, started listening to the ego more than listening to the heart and started hanging out with the wrong crowd, maybe. And, you know, I started drinking, started not going to school and quit playing sports and made the next 15 years of my life really really hard but uh you know i got uh i got sober like 16 years ago and man, every day since then has been way better and man it's uh you know life's life's pretty messy because we're always in the middle of it right but you know what I'll, i've learned to really choose love over fear and come from a place of love and really creation uh the majority of the time I'm definitely not perfect i'm a work in progress too but man i'm really grateful for all the hard that i went through because it really helped me understand how to have empathy and compassion for the people that I work with and help them create the results they want. And I think those are the two goals, you know, it's just to have empathy and to create as opposed to, you know, react from that place of fear and judgment. Man. Yeah. It's crazy how life, if you can take a step back and have that self-awareness, which you did through going through all your struggles and took yeah. some, some years, um, but to, to, get and fast forward and say, man, that's what shaped me. And to hear you, how you choose love, empathy, and compassion and create. And then now that's what you do. I mean, it's one thing just to take that lesson for yourself uh, and, and have that be in you, but then to take it to the whole next level, which is what you do. I don't know if you call them clients or, or what you call the people that you serve, but that's what you do now all over the world. And I just want to say congrats, congrats for that. Congrats for being sober uh, and, and overcome that uh, tough uh, addiction. I know that's a lifelong battle. And uh, yeah, so thanks for everything that you do. And you're doing incredible things. So I got to get into the title of the show, Life's Essential Ingredients. And I know it's love, but I want to get in a little, a little personal with you. How do you structure your day? What are those essential ingredients? Uh, and you can apply it to you or maybe to your clients um, that allow you to bring your best self each and every day. And then also allow you to, Hey, today wasn't my day, but you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to get better. What are those essential ingredients? Yeah. I think that's a powerful question. And especially the fact that, you know, like every day we're not, unfortunately, we're not sliding down rainbows while we pet a puppy on the way to work at the unicorn ranch, right? Like <laughs> sometimes there's real world, hard things that happen to us. And you know, this past year, like, and it's like, I had like four really close friends pass away and just, man, life is hard sometimes. And, but that contrast also allows for a lot of gratitude, right? And I think gratitude, I mean, it's becoming almost a buzzword, right? And it gets overlooked because of that. But man, gratitude is so important because it's an intentional focus on love and whatever you focus on, that's what you're creating more of. And so when I'm focused on the things I'm grateful for, I'm like instantly have more things to be grateful for. And that's what I'm going to attract to me. And so that's where I always start my day. Like, feet hit the floor, walking down the hallway. It's like 10 things I'm grateful for. And it's, you know, the same frequent flyers, like God, you know, Jesus, my family, like health, you know, like you guys today, just whatever, right? Just focusing on what I do want. Because if I start out the day pulling up my phone, looking at social media or something like that, that's so dangerous because I start in that react reactive space and I'm just reacting to everything in front of me. And I'm not like creative or innovative because I set the tone the wrong way. And so really starting with gratitude, then uh, just sit and kind of silence and being really still, maybe read the Bible, maybe journal, do some breath work, do some meditation. And it's so beautiful when you can start this day on your terms, because it allows you to be present, you know, and the work that you're doing, be present with the people that are sitting across from you, whether, you know, it's on a zoom call or, you know, in the flesh, but if I'm not present, then I'm not going to have the ability to co-create my relationships. It's just going to be me waiting on my turn to talk. And, you know, that's, the biggest way to disrespect people is to take away their time. You know, we've all had those conversations where you say something and the person you're talking to, it's clear they're not listening to you. They were just kind of holding their breath and wondering how many words you're going to say before they can start talking. And that's not because people are bad people. It's just because people get so busy in their heads. And so we've got to kind of let the dust settle 
And that's the best way I found to do it is by starting the day on my terms like that and really just coming from a place of stillness and presence. And and again, it doesn't make everything perfect, but I've got a much higher likelihood that I'm going to show up the way I want to show up and really just connect with people in these like mutually beneficial relationships where we get to co-create and we co-elevate together. And it's not like me versus you, which is what happens in a lot of relationships. Like definitely in the first, you know, 30 years of my life, I was, when I was like all ego, when I was practicing my addiction and it was like, I was so focused on being right as opposed to actually getting what I wanted. And I like, I lacked the ability to say, I don't know and mean it. Like the that's all ego, right? It has to know everything. And if you don't know, it acts like it knows. And that's a hard way to live. Like in reality, I know very little, but what I do know, like I'm very good at, and I work diligently to continually evolve towards mastery. And what I'm really good at is helping people, you know, transform to the very best versions of themselves to leverage that innate natural genius that we all have so that, you know, they can spend more time doing what they lo most love to do, making their greatest impact in the world and just feeling more alive and energized and happy by the work they're doing, the relationships they have. And, you know, we, again, I can't give what I don't have. And so it's a continual evolution for me to do that for myself so that I can serve people at higher levels. Mm, I love, I love how you keep saying co-create uh, in our, our first book that we wrote is, is we rise together. And there's just so much that goes in into that with pizza and everything else that we're trying to do. But I know you're helping your clients and everybody that crosses uh, paths with you to rise up and be their best self. And then I also know you love being out in nature. Do you incorporate that into how you serve your clients and, and play into their strengths. I, and I love the picture in the back. Uh, uh, he's got a beautiful picture. Most people are just listening in, but this is on YouTube as well. And it just looks like a picture out in the desert with a, a tree in the back. But uh, yeah, so get back to the question, you know, what is it about nature that allows you? And I know it's going to be some of these things that you just shared, um, but do you encourage that? Do you do any work with your clients and in getting into that space and allowing them for their cortisol levels to drop, to do the breath work, to just get into that space, to quiet the busyness that's going on in our heads? And then what results do you see with that, with the people that you're serving? Sure. So just for your knowledge, that's Joshua tree in the picture back there. Mm -hmm. So it definitely is desert, but, uh, and I think nature is so crucial to all of our just happiness and you know nature is the truth right and life and it's so powerful because i mean even a few minutes in nature connects you back to the present moment connects you to your awareness of yourself and like puts you into flow and so you know just going outside just chilling for a second or going for a walk or you know even better going to climb some mountains which are very uh, few of those in Dallas, unfortunately but it's all good and you know, we have planes and cars and we can go places to do that when it comes to clients, I haven't done a lot in nature with my clients. I've definitely been thinking about something that I could do to bring that aspect in because I think it's so very powerful. And it's powerful for everybody for a lot of the same ways, but also a lot of different ways too. And I think that just spending time with, uh, you know, that instinctual part of us is profound for so many different levels of awareness. But when you mentioned breath work, and so that, is somewhere I spend a little time with people. And one of the things I think it's important to do is to understand the power of heart coherence. And, you know, if you want to go deeper on heart coherence, there's a great free course on the heartmath.com website. But heart coherence is about, you know, leveraging the infinite part of us, the infinite unlimited side of us. That's that's our heart. That's our soul, you know, the spirit of us. And again, the mind's great, but the mind's finite, right? The mind has a beginning and an end. Like no matter how much you know, there's still an end to what whatever it is you know but the heart that's the unlimited space and you know we use a tool to quantify people's natural talents and their energy patterns so that we can see hey these are your natural sources of energy this is where you're going to get your most elite performance like aka your genius and here's what it looks like when you give all that away but really going into the heart and understanding how to stay connected to that and probably more importantly what's preventing that connection like that's where the real power comes from because i can't know my you know I can't know my genius conceptually. I have to actually use it and be experiential with it. And it's going to evolve and change over time. But the, the greatest thing in the world is that nobody's ever going to beat you at being you. But if you don't know what you look like and what your highest self actually is, then you're going to have great trouble bringing it into the world and expressing that, whether that's to serve you or serve other people. But really 
powerful because when it comes to genius, like it's so much more about habits than it is natural talent. And, you know, the assessment we use, like it identifies your natural talents and it's always the same 34, just a different order. And I've, I've seen thousands of these reports from different leaders that I've worked with. I've never seen a blank report. It's like, no, you have no talent whatsoever. Like, no, what, what's rare is people who understand these talents and can use them on demand. That's what's rare because that's their superpowers. And when you can stack those on top of each other and use that to create, like that's how you bring your magic into the world. Mm. Uh, and I say this so many times, my wife cracks up. I love it, but I do, man. I love doing this podcast of meeting great people like you getting to hang out with Mike and then just for our lives to be touched. You know, and we started this podcast just to try and help one person. That one person has always been me uh, and Mike. And then now we got a few listeners that tune in and uh, I'm just in really enjoying what you're saying, but I want to uh, have you take a step back. You know, you talked about experiential with your genius, and I know you've done a lot of leadership work, but in 2019, you know, you had the courage to take that leap of faith to start your own company, which had to be uh, exciting and, and nerve wracking at the same time. Walk the listeners through when you got that first client or when you you took that first step of like, boom, here's my company and we're rolling and I'm getting to share my heart with the world. And ah, that feels so good. Yeah. Well, it's pretty natural for me just to take action before having all the information just because of the way I'm built. And you know, Johnny Carson had a cool quote when he said, just kind of jump off the cliff and build your wings on the way down. It's like, you know, I don't, I don't want instructions. They'll slow me down. Yeah. I might come back and ask for them later, but you know, I, it was when you were describing that, you know, the excitement, I was definitely excited. My wife was terrified. You know, she's like, no, no, no. Like you got to check and you have this great job. And I had a great job. I was a leadership and sales trainer for a big organization that's based here in Dallas, a $4 billion company. I got to train people all over the U S I got to travel. And I started coaching on the side, which is what I did all day in my career. But I met someone on a plane. I was talking to a woman and she's like, yeah, I'm feeling really stuck. I'm plateaued. And I'm like, oh, cool. I could help. And I told her some ideas and she's like, hey, can I pay you? I'm like, yeah, I guess. Cool. I was just being <laughs> friendly. But you know, more money is never a problem. And really, I, and to be able to help somebody is such a cool gift, right? Something that I know can help her be more of the thing she wants to be and serve herself, her family and her community better. And so I started taking on more clients and I started working with uh, some sales teams and some different leadership teams and I really started making really good money. And I felt guilty, but I wasn't, I was still serving the people in my job well, but I wanted to leave because I'm like, okay, I can do both until I can't do both at my highest level. And I started getting busy in my own business to where I needed to step away and I was going to go in and let them know I was traveling back to Dallas because at the time I was living in Chicago and I was going to let my boss know who actually was a pretty good friend at the time. And I felt bad because I'm like, man, I was going to let him down. You know, I've been here for a few years and he helped me so much. And before I got to tell him, uh, the president of the company came in. It's like, hey, you know what? At the end of this week, your team's going to be dissolved and you guys aren't going to be here anymore. And we're going to give you, you know, like three months severance package or whatever. And I'm like, sweet in my head, you know, like this worked out really well. And everyone on my team, I felt really bad for because they were like devastated. And so I'm like, oh, I need to act sad, right? Like, I don't want to be happy when they're all devastated. And so, I, you know, I got in the car and I told my wife and she's like, oh my gosh, really? And her first question was, she was in Chicago, that's where we lived. And she goes, can we move back to Dallas? <laughs> that was her first question. I'm like, yeah, we can move back to Dallas. And you know what? Like, I think the best bet we can ever make is betting on ourselves. Like the only time that it gets scary owning your own business or doing anything is when you get hyper fixated on the future and the way things should be. And if I stay stuck in the future, that creates a lot of anxiety. And yeah, I need to look up and have a vision and understand where I want to go, but also learning to detach from the outcome. And that is, you know, easier said than done. But really, it's pretty simple. Uh, just continually letting go of needing things to be a certain way for me to be okay and being present so that uh, you know I can really create more of the things I want in the present moment. Because every time I leave the present moment, like the subconscious takes over and this, you know, the internet stat, right? I read this on the internet, so it must be true. You know, like 90% <laughs> of our days run by our subconscious and like 90% of the subconscious thoughts are negative. And so anytime I'm not aware of the present moment, I'm basically in a negative mindset and we just attract whatever we're being. If I'm you know, using this negative mindset, I'm being lack, I'm being fear. I'm going to attract more fear to me, more you know, negative situations, negative people, negative ideas. And you know what? Like I'm abundant. You're abundant. This is an abundant world we live in. That's one of the reasons I love nature because it reflects that abundance back to us if we'll let it. And love what you're saying and sharing. 
And I want to get into that abundance, which uh, I'll attach the word freedom. And I know that's one of the things that you help your clients uh, achieve, and maybe you spoke to it, and maybe it's in those the same context that you were just sharing. But you know, I, I want to get into you know what you really do. You know, coach who has helped thousands of professionals look inside themselves to find clarity, discover what they love, and live a life of freedom. What is the best tip you can give to the listener if you haven't already shared it uh, to take action, take one step towards living a life of freedom? Yeah, I think the first step in creating anything new in your life is with questions and the two questions. So simple. What do you want and why do you want it? And it's wild because everybody's like, yeah, I know what I want. And then you ask people like, uh, and they get this blank look, right? And if you can't explain something simply, then you don't understand it. And that's okay. That doesn't mean, you know, that we're bad people or whatever. But like, if I'm going to the gym, I need to know what I want, right? If I'm building a business, I need to know what I want. Like, what do you want to spend your day doing? How do you want to feel? And why is that important? And the way that you can kind of get to that answer, the what is like your passion. Like, what do you love doing? And I love helping people move towards mastery and be better versions of themselves so they can serve more. Because the whole point in life to me is growing and giving. The more we grow, the more we can give. And so that's great. Love is awesome. Passion's awesome. That's the what. But, you know, it can be fairly selfish, right? It's about us at the end of the day. So that's where the why comes in. That's the purpose. Like, okay, cool. How can I mix generosity into this thing I'm passionate about doing? And really beautiful when I'm in that place because it allows me to spend the majority of my time doing what I most love to do while I make, you know, the biggest contribution I can make to the world. And I think that's what we're all here to do. We're here to use our gifts to create more for everyone and really simple again, but not necessarily easy and really crucial. If you do ask yourself those questions, like it's two questions, not three, but a lot of people try to add in this third question, like, okay, this is what I want. This is why I want it. How am I going to do that? And that's the ego demanding to know the how. And that's like, you know what, if you do figure out how, like, how do you know that's the right way? And, you know, like I need to have an idea. Sure. But I just want to take action and be open to a better way because, you know, miracles are only going to arise in a mind that's open to them. And if I'm closed and fixated on this one way to win, there's no pathway for miracles to flow into my life. Hey, Kevin, I got a question. Um, Jeff and I are basketball coaches and, the way we see success is through the kids we coach. It's usually years after they come back and they say something to us that uh, that we told them back in the day and now it resonates with them. Usually not when we're actually coaching them. Um, what is it that you see with some of your clients that you're coaching that you determine it was a success? They've learned what you had to give them an offer of. So make sure I understand the question. Uh, so something they come back later that they didn't initially see. Or something been, you see during while you're coaching them that you see, all right, they understand, they they get the lesson, and now they can, they've taken your lesson and incorporated into their lives. And I think one of the biggest shifts for all of us, myself included, and the clients I work with is really understanding that there's nobody to compete with it but us. Because, you know, Teddy Roosevelt said it best, comparison is the thief of joy, right? Anytime we compare ourselves to other people, whether it's comparing my goals, my re you know results, car, whatever, like there's two, two, two outcomes. We never look at other people and go, I'm just like them. It's always I feel inferior or superior. And both of those are a massive disconnect. And so really helping people understand how to let go of the comparison game. And the only thing they need to compare themselves to is, you know, who they were yesterday and who they're going to be tomorrow. Right. And it's like, I just want to be better. I don't want to be perfect. I don't want to compare myself to this perfect false, you know, idealized version of success that doesn't even exist. Just helping people understand that, you know what, the only person you need to beat is you. And it's really beautiful because nobody can ever beat you at being you. And you've got the market cornered on that. Yeah, and, and I know one of the best ways you help your clients be better is kind of what you do, your methodology, which is a Clifton Strengths Assessment and helping people play to their to their strengths. How do you do that? And tell the listeners kind of what that is. And if they wanted to figure out, you know, how to get in contact with you and get that assessment and be part of what you're doing, walk them through why you chose that methodology for for your business. Sure. So Gallup created, it used to be called Strength Finders. Uh, a lot of people probably know it under that name. 
And I think they've given this assessment 33 million times. And Gallup is phenomenal at collecting data. And the reason this assessment is so powerful and, and the reason I went to Gallup years ago to get certified to use this tool is because it's not like a complete portrait of your character, like maybe Myers-Briggs or DISC is going to be. What the Strength Finders or now it's Clifton Strengths assessment identifies, it identifies your natural talents and the patterns of behavior where you're going to have the most energy, right? Like natural talent, like I'm left-handed. So I have a natural talent for writing with my left hand. And after learning how to, you know, write my letters or whatever and all that, now it's a strength. And it's the same thing with these. These are our natural talents. And when we learn how to use these on demand, they become our strengths. And there's also, you know, a contrast to it. It shows you like what your shadow side looks like, or they call it the basement behavior. It's like what it looks like when you give all that power away. And again, not a complete portrait of your character, but just the patterns of behavior that you're going to use to create your elite versions of success, whether it's professionally, personally, whatever, like AKA your genius. And it's so phenomenal because in like one 30 minute conversation, you can totally transform yourself or someone else to really give themselves permission to be them. And I know for me, like I have a, a brother who's two years older than me and my brother Max is awesome, but I always like joke with him. Like you're, dude, you're like born like 80 years old. He's like wise and mature and like our whole lives. He's been an adult. Like he skipped childhood and he's completely the opposite of me. If you look at his strength finders report, like he is deliberative and methodical. And I'm like, I think better when I'm going hundred miles an hour, like no matter what I'm doing and like, that's okay. As long as I don't compare myself to him, but I used to, I would look at him and I'm like, man, I don't, I can't do any of the things he can do. Like he can build anything with his hands. He's, you know, he's amazing at that kind of thing, but I'm not. And that's okay. I'm talented at a lot of other things. And when I first took this assessment, I was so grateful because not that we need it, but I finally felt I had permission to be me. And one of my strengths is positivity. And I used to turn that down. I'm like, man, everybody else isn't so excited about life. And maybe I shouldn't be, you know, maybe it should be normal, like whatever that is. And man, a good attitude is absolutely a superpower. You know, the energy to start things, the energy to keep things going, the energy to see the good in the heart. And it's such a gift to give yourself. It's such a gift to give your family. And one of the really cool things is when you take this assessment and then you start to understand other people's strengths, you build a lot of empathy. Because you know what? Like, uh, there's a fish. I go, uh, there's a lake I go to by my house all the time. I don't yell at the fish for swimming, right? Fish swim, <laughs> and so I don't like get sideways to my brother for being deliberative and taking a long time to make decisions because that's his strength, right? It's just different, right? So I have more empathy and compassion, and really understand that other people, like we all know, fundamentally people are different from us, but usually we treat them as us. Like I would never do that. Like yeah, of course you wouldn't because you're not them. And so a really cool uh, way just to go deep on what your genius looks like and how you can use it and Anybody wants to go deeper on that, you can find that assessment online. Or if you go to my website, you can book a free strategy call with me or one of my team. And we'll, and in like, like I said, a 30 minute call, we can quantum leap you down the road towards whatever your version of amazing is. And Mike, you have to be thinking uh, about Yuri uh, when, when you're talking about your brother, Max, I just am thinking about Mike's brother, Yuri and like, yeah, that's Yuri <laughs> so much. But yeah, I know a, another, one of the great things that you do for, the people that work with you uh, is to create your tribe, which you call your mastermind group and, and tell the listeners a little bit uh, about that and um, the benefits of being part of something bigger than yourself. Yeah. You know, I'm in a mastermind. I've been in many masterminds and I think it's so powerful. The, the one thing that always seems to surprise people about a mastermind is the community piece. Like we all know that we need other people, but it's so phenomenal when you can get into a community of like-minded people on like-minded journeys. And, you know, we're fairly picky about who comes in. Like it's successful leaders that have a servant heart, right? You got to be humble because if you've got all the answers, then how are you going to grow? But it's so phenomenal when you get this container of powerful people who maybe kind of plateaued in their life, just want to recalibrate that internal energy and start leveraging that innate genius to improve their income, their impact, their relationships, and really how you do anything is how you do everything. And just by coming together for the 12 weeks that we work together, it's so phenomenal to see how far people go, how fast they go and how it improves every aspect of their lives. You know, one of our former members, Mary, and she's, she was crushing it when she came to us, she was making, you know, half a million dollars a year. And she's like, I'm winning on the scoreboard, but I feel like I'm living somebody else's life or somebody else's version of success. And I'm stressed out and like, I'm just a little short. I'm short with the people in my life. I'm short with my kids. I'm short with my husband. And I'm just not excited about what I'm doing. And like, I've been there on Sunday night. I don't want to go to sleep because I don't want to get up tomorrow and do the thing with those people. Right. Like I've had that job and man, she shifted and she 
quit. She was the president of a company. She quit, started her own company. And like in three months time, you know, she did all that. She started her own company in the middle of COVID. That first year she doubled her income, started making, you know, seven figures for the first time in her life. And like, she's like, you know what? My relationships are all better, but most importantly, like I'm better with my kids. I'm a better mom. I'm a better wife. And uh, now her husband's going through the mastermind because she got him involved. She's like, he's like, can you do that for me? I'm like, absolutely. Because it's so much fun to get to come alongside really powerful people that just want to grow more so that they can be more engaged and present in their own life, but then be able to serve the people that they serve at higher levels. Speaking of powerful people, um, who's been some great mentors or people that you've looked up to that have shaped your life? Yeah. Well, well, I got a bunch really close to home, like my brother, for sure, because he's probably one of the best teachers for me because he's built so much different from me. Like we have the same values, but you know, the approach is completely different and he's really kind and he's just successful at pretty much anything he's ever tried. So I always admire just the way he approaches things with just that old school can do attitude. It's like, yeah, cool. Here's what happened. Here's what we're going to do. No big deal. I'm like, man, must be nice not to have emotions. But uh, no, he's he's really great and just <laughs> man, a really good dad and a great brother and is a really cool example of how to just be an awesome human. Uh, my dad, amazing, you know, passed away years ago, but uh, the best work ethic and the best heart of anybody I've ever met. And uh, my mom too. My mom's probably the kindest person that's ever walked on the earth. Just a huge, massive love for humanity, and uh, my stepdad too. And, uh, you know, in the professional world, I had a great coach that really helped me years ago. I've had a lot of great coaches, but, uh, Robert was in the secret service for like almost 30 years. And, you know, those guys, like they're seeing what's not there, right. What nobody else is seeing. And he was really good at calling me on my BS. And, uh, at the time I didn't love it always. Right. Like, but it, sometimes growing pains hurts, but he was so good at, uh, saying what needed to be said and the way it needed to be said. And he really taught me a lot about what, being a phenomenal coach look like. And I'm just grateful that I had the opportunity to spend time with somebody like that, that it's so nice to be work with coaches, whether it's in a mastermind group or one-on-one or however the capacity is that the sole aim of a coach is to help you get what you want to see where you're wasting your power, wasting your energy, blocking it, not using it and how you can, and you know, a short amount of time leverage that to dramatically improve the results you're getting in your life. And uh, really, you know, I've, I've read, gosh, so many books i love to read and i like, found so many cool mentors through books too just really understanding how other people created their version of amazing whatever that was and using that to really magnetize whatever it is i'm doing beat me to the punch that was my next question give us two books that you recommend to help someone kind of find themselves you know and to maybe take a step back or just good books i know that's a to maybe a tough question to answer but uh, any any good books that you recommend Oh gosh. Yeah. It's like picking a favorite kid. Right. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, man, the war of art is probably one of the books that I've read the most. It's by Stephen Pressfield and it's a super short read, uh, but it's all about resistance. You know, that invisible force that stops us from doing the things that we want to do most. And really just having language around that was dramatically helpful. I've, gosh, I've probably read that at least 10, 12 times. And I've recommended that to a lot of people and it's helped people get a lot of traction. I would definitely check that out if you haven't. Uh, it's, it's on Audible too. And man, recently over the past couple of years, I've been reading and rereading The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, which is pretty phenomenal because it's all about just unlocking your genius and owning it so that you, know, you can create success and whatever you know that looks like to you in your own way and the things that are holding you back from doing that. Yeah, thanks for those tips. And uh, speaking of unlocking genius, I imagine it's a little bit tricky and you run across some clients that uh, unfortunately just not able to get to the space of receiving feedback in the way that you wish, wish they could. What tips would you have for perhaps a listener that's listening in of like, man, that's kind of me. Anytime someone comes at me with something, I'm immediately reactive uh, two things. And yeah. What, what tip would you give to somebody that's in that space? Yeah. Uh, it's pretty simple. Quit doing that. Um, no. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. When you were talking, I'm like, man, that's a pretty much me age 15 to 30. Right. I mean, that, that's just all ego. Like when you just refuse to see the good and the value in other people and their ideas, you know, that's what humility is, is understanding that you don't have all the answers. So I think the first step is not having an opinion about everything. 
really important that we don't we don't have to have an opinion about everything. I don't, I don't need to believe everything I think. And I, I don't need to have an opinion about it. I don't need to make up stories about everything. And it's about being kind more than it's about being right in your relationships, whether it's a relationship with yourself or a relationship with other people. And so like our mind wants to serve us, but it has, you know, a dramatically kind of dangerous negative slant just because of the way that it's Manuf- formed and manufactured as we grow in age. And so I think one of the best things you can do is learn to question the stories of the mind, not so you can change your mind, but so it'll change on its own. The mind wants to serve us. We just need to help it get going in the right direction. And I read a book, I can't remember the name of the book, but it was written by one of the former directors of the CIA whenever Colin Powell was in the secretary of, I can't remember his role in the government, but he had a pretty high position in the cabinet. And this CIA director would brief Colin Powell every day. And Colin Powell was like, I want you to bring me the information this way. He's like, I want you to tell me what you know about whatever the instance is. Tell me what you know. Then you tell me what you don't know. And lastly, you tell me what you think. And so what do you know? What don't you know? And then what do you think? And the whole point of that is to delineate the fact and the fiction, right? You know, your thoughts from the facts. And I think that's such a powerful way to look at whatever your thoughts are or whatever the situation is. Okay, cool. This thought I'm having, like, you know, one of the ones that I hear, like, I'm too busy, right? Like, hey, how are you? I'm busy. Like, that's not a feeling, right? And then it becomes this identity and like everything is busy. I'm like, cool, man. I want to be productive. I don't want to be busy. And so I'm too busy. Like, okay, like ask yourself, like, what do I know about this? What don't I know? You know, what do I think? And, you know, I think I'm busy, but you know, what do I actually know about it? Great practical tips. And again, we're on with Kevin Keppel, uh, best place to find him uh, through his website, dot U S. And he's uh, coming to us from Dallas, Texas. And I think it's a great spot to kind of wrap this baby up. And we always end in the, in the same way with this legacy question, you're a young man. Uh, you've been doing incredible work, helping people all over the world. Let's fast forward 50, 60 years for you. Uh, you're on your deathbed and you are surrounded by all the people that love you and that you have served. And there's a great quote from John Alston that says, the only thing you take with you when you're gone is what you leave behind. What is it you're going to leave behind with the people that have been uh, in your presence for all those years? Man, what a powerful question. You know, I think if nothing else, I would love it if people said he cared and he, and he helped. You know, it was more important to him to help other people than to help himself. Ah, beautiful and and not simple. That's not the right word, but but simple. Just keeping life. The older I get, the the more simple we can keep things. The more clear we can be on the actions that we need to take to execute that life. And man, just in listening uh, to you over the the past forty minutes here, yeah, it's just amazing what you're doing. And I know my Pasha wants to say thanks for for being our guest. Oh, uh, absolutely, Kevin. Wow, that was uh, amazing. On this show, third season, we have just amazing people. And just when you think there's no more amazing people out there, we get some more on the show. And you're definitely amazing. Appreciate it. And the one thing I love the most that really stood out to me, everything stood out, but no one could beat me at being me. I love that. And thank you for that. I'm going to go tell my kids that in a minute. (laughs) And thanks for being on the show. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Jeff, and thanks, Mike. I appreciate you guys creating this really cool container for uh, people to come together and learn from you. I've listened to a few of your episodes, and man, you guys, just your your soul bleeds through, and the intention behind what you're doing is is love, and it's really cool to get to spend time around people that I want to be like, so thanks for the time. Ah, thanks. Hey, and listeners, thank you. Season 3, Episode 11. Uh, you know how we do a boom, baby. That just happened. We out. <laughs>